Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday morning to you all. Hope you guys are feeling well out there and staying safe and having a great start to your Tuesday and a great work week out there so far. So this morning, it's going to be our last really long, detailed update on this storm system that's already cranking up right now. It's snowing in portions of western Texas, the panhandle of Texas. That is beginning to move into Oklahoma this morning. There's already some pretty strong storms in southeast Texas. So you got strong storms on one part of the state, snow falling on the other. I would say that is very rare, but it's really not for this part of the country. It just happens sometimes. But a very dynamic system. We need to figure it out one really last time for you folks, especially for areas that could really see some dangerous weather today. I'm really worried about a severe weather outbreak. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not person. You, you guys know me. I, I don't try to hype things up. Uh, but I'm really worried and concerned about an area. Luckily, it's a very small area, but I'm very concerned about these very small areas that are some highly populated areas. So we're going to talk about the severe weather threat also in this video and then just give you really one last shot. These snowfall accumulations for the portions that are going to see snow uh, today and then tonight. And then we'll give you an uh, we'll give you an update tonight, too. I'm not going to say I'm not going to make a video, but of course, the video. I'm sorry, the storm will be ongoing. There'll be a lot of people going live. So this is, like I said, the last really big video ahead of this storm so if you guys have not subscribed subscribe certainly consider doing that like the video if you like it appreciate the amazing support i really do in supporting my channel i've had a lot of growth over the last uh, week leading up to the storm so thank you all for the growth and the uh, continued support and if you guys got anything that i can pray about or pray over please put it in the comments below so i can pray over it and so others can do so too and we're certainly praying for you folks especially in the south uh, this morning and uh, hoping for the best and, ex and and just and just hoping that this doesn't materialize as bad as it might could. So let's get going. Let's take a look at what's going on. We always look at this first and you see this spin. This is our low. It's really going to speed up and start moving in Texas a little bit later today. And there's already a lot of convection firing up in eastern and southeastern sections of Texas. A lot of moisture right here in the panhandle of Texas fa fa uh, falling in the form of snow. This is beginning to move into western Oklahoma. Let me see what you're let me know what you're seeing this morning in this uh, neck of the woods for sure. And then, of course, we're done with the system that has uh, moved off the northeast coastline. We're not talking about that anymore, but this is it. This is the big day, guys. And then tomorrow will be another big day also. But and there will be some severe weather tomorrow, too. In portions of the Carolinas, my neck of the woods will certainly have a chance for some severe weather and a tornado threat also tomorrow. But watches and warnings were littered with it. Winter storm warnings in the pink. This now includes Amarillo. Uh, now includes Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Fayetteville, Arkansas, St. Louis, Indianapolis, Springfield, Missouri, and Illinois. And this extends all the way into one county in southern Michigan and several several counties basically all the counties in far western ohio and then you just got winter weather advisories for areas like cleveland um and columbus so they're just they're just questioning basically how much winter weather you're going to get but some of these could get upgraded to warnings we'll see and you're wondering what all these brown and yellow and mustard colors are these are high wind warnings so even though you guys will not be getting hit by storms initially today it'll come in later tonight for these areas of the south the winds are going to be absolutely ripping, guys. Uh, stout, low-level jet pushing 90 knots. Uh, that is an extreme low-level jet. Low-level jet meaning the wind's about a mile above our heads. I mean, if you're waking up this morning, the clouds are going to be moving what seems like a 1,000 miles per hour above your heads and just moving at like literal interstate speed, if not higher. Then you got a mid-level jet pushing, which is the area winds above the low-level jet, pushing over 100 knots. So... The ingredients are there kinematic wise, which is the wind energy, the wind pattern you need that supports a tornado threat. They, it's there. It's maxed out, I would say. The thing that you're lacking for a huge, severe outbreak is instability, CAPE, uh, the, the, basically the convective available energy in the atmosphere. And we'll talk on that. But you got high wind watches, high wind warnings, wind advisories for just about the entire south and southeast. So. Let's talk about, let's break this down for the winter weather side first, and we'll talk about the severe weather side. So, latest HRRR model, we'll take a look at what's going on right now this morning. Snowing in Amarillo, uh, snowing uh, west and east of Amarillo, north, south, uh, snowing down in Lubbock. This is only the radar out of Amarillo, so uh, you got some uh, reports of some mixed rain and snow beginning to enter the picture in western Oklahoma. No reports of snow yet in Oklahoma City, but you know, you go down here uh, just 
just north of uh, Fort Worth and reporting a little bit of sleet. So I, I don't think it's going to stay sleet. I think you'll have an opportunity in the Dallas-Fort Worth area to see some mixing right at the tail end of this. But uh, this is it. The storm's cranking up. But at the same time, you know, you go down here to Houston, switch it to the reflectivity, and you got storms on going this morning, lightning and thunder. Um, and, and this is going to be an active area as we get later this morning into the afternoon hours. Houston right here, well north of town and uh, east of College Station. Uh, it, it's, um, it's, it's already popping off this morning. It really just tells you the, already the atmospheric players that are beginning to build. And I mean, you already got severe storms in the Gulf of Mexico. So nothing technical severe right now, but these are some strong storms already producing some hail. So uh, we'll talk more on that here in a minute. But uh, the evolution of the storm really on the winter weather side will continue to move this forward. If you're confused about the time frame at all, we're really this today, the main brunt of the storm will really be in central time. So back this right up here, one hour. So this is 8 a.m. Eastern time, back it up one hour. So we we'll start to let's, let's move this all the way into about 10 a.m. this morning here in the next few hours. Heavy snow begins to enter western Oklahoma. It's beginning to snow a little bit closer, starting to inch a little bit closer to Wichita Falls here, but not quite snowing in Lubbock. Uh, you know, starting to get really close to Abilene. Not quite, though. Uh, you know, you're, you're, I know you're seeing green right here near Oklahoma City, but I do think it'll start out as some rain in Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and even areas of North Texas for sure. But then as this rain starts falling, dynamic cooling occurs, which means it cools down the atmosphere, the temperatures drop, a wet bulb is met, and then you switch from heavy rain to heavy snow just like that. And uh, it'll happen fast too, guys. You'll, it'll be raining, and then all of a sudden you'll see some flakes mixing in, and then it'll just start unloading heavy snow. So we'll stop this about midday. This is around lunchtime today. Uh, rain and snow begins to enter Oklahoma City. It quickly changes the snow. And then we'll move into about the 3 p.m. time frame. It's snowing pretty good in most of Oklahoma. And even, you know, you see this heavy rain moving into the mountainous regions of northwest and western Arkansas, eastern Oklahoma. But listen, this could start out as rain. I'll be very interested to see how long it rains in these areas, if it does at all. But this is going to move in. If it rains, it'll only be for a short period, and it'll change to heavy, wet snow, guys. I'm talking about snowflakes. Uh, the, the the size of well well bigger than a than a half dollar i mean maybe the size of like a, a dog's pole I, I don't i don't know what to compare it to anyways i always like to joke on twitter the size of bowling balls but it won't literally be that big but i could i would venture to say maybe some flakes out there are close to the size of golf balls um but pretty wild to see at the same time i know your eyes are peeled down here for my folks in the south hold up i'm going to talk about the severe weather threat uh, but listen, I mean, we get all the way until about 4 p.m. this afternoon, this evening. Snowing pretty good. you got this backside comma feature that's going to try to show Dallas-Fort Worth some love as far as winter weather a little bit later this evening. But at this point, it is snowing. I know you see these areas of green right here. This is kind of weird, but I really think this will be snow. At this point, it's snowing very, very heavily in most of Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Tulsa. And then we'll switch it all the way to about 7 p.m. This is when you'll have a chance to begin to mix in the Dallas-Fort Worth. Can you switch to a maybe a period, even if it's 30 minutes of some heavy wet snow in the Dallas area? You could. As far, the more you work north, the higher that chance, obviously. And uh, I really think areas, maybe a couple counties north of Dallas could pick up a quick, wet, slushy inch or two of snow. I think it's possible. But the, the, the really the true dynamics of this storm that's really impressive is how heavy it's going to snow. It's not going to be some light to moderate, easy like Sunday morning kind of snow. It's going to be ripping to, to uh, this evening. I keep wanting to say tomorrow, but it's today now. This evening, uh, listen, the mountains, I'm not going to try to pronounce any kind of mountain ranges anymore, guys. I don't want to butcher them, but the mountains of, four, of, of south of the Boston and uh, Ozarks here and the mountains of western Arkansas and the hills of eastern Oklahoma down here, it's going to be snowing pretty good. Winter storm warnings up. And, and listen, you could get one to three inch per hour rates in these areas of the Ozarks and northwest Arkansas, including southern Missouri. This continues to move through, guys, and then we'll go on and Stop it right here, and we'll flip it kind of to the next panel here. And here we go. So we're starting to move, and, and not to kind of ignore you guys in Missouri. Listen, the snow all is going to it's going to be snowing as far north as Kansas City uh, overnight tonight. The snow in Kansas City will move in as early as probably 9, 10 p.m. tonight. I know it shows rain. It could start out as rain. It's very marginal setup, guys, meaning it's going to be snowing at a pretty relatively warm temperature. But 
the dynamics um, aloft are going to allow for cooling for it to snow. So, you know, it shows it starting out as rain in St. Louis, you know, maybe around 8 to 9 p.m. tonight, but then it's going to quickly go to heavy snow. The, the, the big player here, and I've been mentioning it, this, guys, and there's been some trends towards some warmer scenarios for this section. I mentioned this will be the wild card area, just like with our first system. I'm talking about Evansville up to Cincinnati, um, and then some northern counties that have some winter weather advisories in Kentucky right in here. But what about down to Paducah, areas of western uh, Kentucky, Mayfield, things like that? What about Jonesboro, Arkansas? What about far northwest Tennessee, just the southeast general area of Missouri? Well, that's going to be probably one of the trickiest spots in this forecast. And it's going to happen overnight. I'll be knocked out, snoring, asleep. So I'm not going to know exactly what's happening. So you guys are going to tell me, have to tell me. Um, but uh, it's going to be an interesting scenario down here. Is it going to be cold enough to start off as a brief one to two hour period of snow down here? And listen, that's all you're going to need to bust high on these forecasts. Because if it goes from rain to maybe a period of snow down here at about a, a couple hours before midnight, around midnight tonight, it's going to be snowing like crazy. For example, Evansville's down here could start out as a little rain, but then quickly go to a period, a period of maybe one to two inch per hour rates overnight tonight. I'm talking about around midnight tonight. And then how long does it stay snow? That's the big question in this area. Tough area. Somebody's going to probably get mad at me in this area, <laughs> especially in Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana. Please don't take it out on me. That's why I'm going to show you here in a second, the National Weather Service forecast. But all I'm saying is there's a period there's going to be an area down here that's going to be tricky. It is. But the further north you get into Illinois, Indiana, we'll keep this going. We're getting all the way to about 2, 3, 4 o'clock a.m. We'll start this off. We'll stop it right here. This is at 3 a.m. It is absolutely unloading snow. Springfield, uh, Illinois, central, um, southern to central. Southern will try to mix with rain and maybe some sleet, but central, uh, you know, Illinois, getting up to Chicago, the snow begins to move in probably as early as maybe an hour or two after midnight tonight. Milwaukee, ah, it's going to get very close to you guys. Um, uh, Rockford, Illinois, it's going to be snowing, but the, the brunt of the storm is going to be down here. And we'll stop it right here. This is around 5 a.m. Indianapolis. You're right on the fringe of that rain snow line. But another wild card here is going to be a dry slot, which has been trending more north. A dry slide is basically what it sounds like. It's an area of dry area. It's not like physically feel dry, but it's an area of lack of precipitation. So somebody is going to get dry slide in those same regions that uh, is questioned to see snow or not. But snowing heavily in Cincinnati, like I said, Cincinnati is going to have a, a maybe a two to four hour period of heavy wet snow that could, could dump four to five inches of snow on the city. You just don't know. Dayton, same thing. The further north you work into Ohio, Indiana and Illinois, the more snow you get. It's, it's that simple. Um, there's no really elevation-driven regions in this area like there is in Arkansas and eastern Oklahoma. This is straightforward. And then here's right here. This is around 6 to 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Backside snow begins to work its way into southern Illinois. This could switch you guys to a heavy period of snow uh, Wednesday morning. But this is a dry slot region down here. Some areas, somebody's going to get gypped with snow. And this has been flirting into moving into Ohio. That's why they have hesitated in Ohio with the winter storm warnings. Yes, your front end snow right here in the wee hours of the morning tonight will be intense. Okay, there's no doubt about that. It will be intense. But what's going to happen as this rain snow line gets close tomorrow morning? Cleveland looks like a solid period of heavy snow for several hours. But then here comes the dry slot. You start to lose some precipitation. How much snow do you get before this moves in tomorrow morning? Cincinnati, you begin to mix, turn to rain. Southern Indiana, you turn to rain. But what I want to watch is this is going to be the jackpot region somewhere in here. Who all stays snow and who all stays into the precipitation? Indianapolis, I'm looking to you because right now that looks like to be the case for you. I think Indianapolis, the city could get anywhere from seven to as much as a foot of snow. I know that's a wide range. You're thinking, well, you know, it doesn't take much skill to forecast that wider range. But one thing I'm watching is uh, Chicago. You guys are trending a little bit higher, I would say. Maybe I think your forecast snow amounts are going to go bump up a little bit more. But, you know, we keep going, and then we switch it to the northeast, guys. And that's, that's not the northeast. But one thing I want to talk about here before we go to the northeast is the snowfall rates. Listen, like Evansville down here, southern Illinois, 
look at these look at this band moving through this is two inch per hour rates snowfall rates two inches in one hour literally moving into areas of southeast missouri from the h triple r model evansville you get a period of two inch per hour rates potentially sometime but then it doesn't last very long this starts to move into the morning into the wee hours in the morning like i said after midnight snow any just pick a number in your area your neck of the woods and that's how much snow that this band could produce in one hour and we go to the next hour so scattered half inch to two inch per hour rates and i just can't reiterate it enough that it's going to be snowing very heavily okay and this is that front end band here in ohio western ohio this is moving in this might reach all the way up to cleveland and then this back end comma head feature will deliver some heavy dynamics also with some heavy snow that can move back into maybe sections of southern illinois southern indiana as we're waking up tomorrow morning so and then this brings more heavy snow in indianapolis so you know this is not a super long duration event and i mean you're going to get some pretty impressive snowfall rates up in the chicago i know you're thinking you know uh, you know a quarter inch or a half inch of snowfall rates up here in chicago ain't a lot but i mean you get that for a several hour period i mean the snow begins to accumulate but detroit you know as we're getting into about late morning to midday tomorrow some intense snowfall rates could enter southeast michigan they really could let's talk let's move it over to the northeast northeast is tricky also guys what I'm watching Wednesday morning is for a frontogenesis band. And what that means, I know you're thinking, what are you talking about, man? A frontogenesis is a band is pretty much an area of intense precipitation. In this case, it'll kind of shoot out ahead of the storm, and this will be some intense snow. Will it hit Pittsburgh? If it does, maybe an hour or two of heavy snow before it moves through. How long does it last for certain people? Erie, Erie, Pennsylvania, for example. Uh, State College, you look to get slammed by this, by this. And then there could be a break. Okay, I was talking about how maybe maybe New York City could get into this about midday. It has trended a little bit warmer for you guys, but I'm not saying it's not going to happen either. It could. It just depends on how quick this precipitation can move in, uh, how fast, how slow. That That's a big factor. But you stop this right here. This is around you know 10 a.m. Eastern time. It is snowing like crazy in Pittsburgh tomorrow morning, especially mid-morning. But it's not going to last long. But I do think you're going to get a period in Pittsburgh, at least a two to three hour period of heavy, wet snow that could accumulate quickly. I'm not, I don't know how much snow Pittsburgh is going to get. I, I really don't. That's a tricky area. Pittsburgh sits at lower elevations with higher elevations all around them. And it's always, I, I, I don't, I don't, you guys might frown upon this word, uh, word but a screw zone as far as pre uh, predicting winter weather. It really is. It's a tough, tough area. And you guys know it in that area too. It's just it's just a tough area, uh, just due to elevation driven dynamics here. But you know this moves through. How long of a period like in Pittsburgh do you get? But listen, this area in wet in eastern West Virginia, far northern VA, the higher elevations and in, in Maryland could suddenly have a intense winter storm on their hands, and sp some high end. Uh, uh, precipitation rates but we keep this going to about midday so around lunchtime here's that front of genesis band moving through southern new england this will try to dump a several inches of snow on you guys maybe not several but a, a certainly two to four inches of snow very quickly on you guys before the rain the snow ultimately changes the rain so we got to watch southern new england guys how does this unfold how much accumulating snow do you get after midday tomorrow on this first band because you're going to have a favorable period and this band is going to be intense where is it set up does it stay mainly rain well you know for areas of northern new jersey you know it's snowing like crazy tomorrow afternoon it's snowing like crazy in all the hilly regions of pennsylvania binghamton is snowing good buffalo it's unloading on you guys this is rising into the upstate of new york state and this is moving through Listen, the latest A triple R model keeps y'all in a heavy period of snow for several, several hours for southern New England. Now, the coastal regions, it's going to be tough, but you don't have to work yourself very far either. I mean, I'll stop this right here. This is around 7 p.m. tomorrow, guys, and you got an all-out winter storm on your hands. Boston, everybody, really. I mean, you do, but you go down here to Long Island, it's a wind-driven rain, okay? So... Yeah, I mean, it's tough. You got a dry slot feature entering New York State. So you might get the majority of your snow at the beginning of the storm before some more moisture wraps in. But, you know, rain's eventually, the snow's eventually going to turn to rain tomorrow evening. Um, but, yeah, I mean, some back-end moisture tries to move into Pittsburgh.
but somebody's not going to get as much snow as they're predicted. I can tell you the dry slot's going to mess somebody up, but if you stop it right here, I know for you folks in Maine, you're thinking, well, man, you didn't finish the storm for me. I'll talk about you guys tonight. I'll be able to because the storm hasn't started for you folks, but I'll, I'll freeze this frame. It's the last hourly panel of the H4R model, and you have insane snowfall rates beginning to move into Maine. This could be an extremely heavy snow event for you guys with some heavy, wet snow moving in. Um, well, it's already moved in by Wednesday evening, but you know we'll stop this in the middle of the night, Wednesday night, and uh, it's snowing like crazy for you folks up here. So all rain at this point in southern um, areas of New England. So uh, the snowfall rates are going to be insane. I'll move through this very quickly. Um, like I said, in Pittsburgh, you could have a period of one to two inch per hour rate. So watch out this frontogenesis band. You know, you could get some na nice snowfall rates if you're a winter weather fan. And then as you're moving into tomorrow evening, guys, some one to two inch per hour rates could move into southern New England. One inch per hour rates are possible. And then the last frame right here shows these insane snowfall rates moving into Maine. So let's talk about snowfall, guys. Latest predictions. And, and know, just know that in Amarillo, some of this has already fell. Let me know what, how much snow you all have already seen in Amarillo but still calling for several inches up here. Dallas down here, not calling for any accumulating snow. You go up to Oklahoma City, Tulsa, now widespread four to maybe six inches of snow. Oklahoma City a little bit more. The hills right here of eastern Oklahoma, several inches of snow, potentially half a foot of snow in some of these regions. Uh, you go on and switch it. We're going to do some of this on the fly. If you hear any kids in the background, I'm watching the neighbor's kids and taking them to school this morning, and they're getting kind of loud in there. <laughs> but anyways, the Ozarks, the mountainous regions right here, the western Arkansas, heavy snow. Nothing has increased, but the Ozarks are going to get hit high. good, guys. I mean, your Fayetteville is going to see seven to eight inches of snow. This is going to be elevation-driven right here. A thousand feet up makes a massive, massive difference, guys. It really does. Um, you can go from two to four inches of snow to, to six to eight inches of snow. It's really going to be driven off this. Southern Missouri, several inches of snow. Uh, you know, right up here, we'll go up to, uh, and I know I'm not getting very detailed with Southern Missouri, but listen, if you're in Southern Missouri outside of far southeast Missouri, you're going to get slammed by a snowstorm tonight. It's coming, it's moving in, and it's certainly going to be very impactful. And uh, we'll move up to, man, how, where is Missouri? Right here, St. Louis. You know, five to six inches, you're good for that. You go over, and this is, you know, find your area, Columbia, Missouri. I think you can get two to four inches of snow. Kansas City, you know, two to four inches of snow. I think you're a good bet for that. Indiana, uh, this shows the entire Ohio Valley, one of the best panels on Weather Bell because it shows all the three main states, including Kentucky. And here it is. I'm not going to stay long on this, but this is the tough area down here. For example, in Evansville, I've had a couple people comment from this area. It is not showing much snow for you at all. But I'm telling you, there is a high-end potential of this where you could get a quick few inches of snow. Do I think you're going to get some kind of massive snowstorm? I don't, but I think that this could be a tricky area down here that could get more snow than what you're forecasted. But listen, up here in south-central Illinois, central to north-central Indiana, that's going to be the epicenter in the Ohio Valley, even northeast Ohio, maybe even a few areas up to Detroit. This is going to be the epicenter of your heaviest event. And then, listen, Ohio, somebody's going to get upset. If you're in southeast Ohio, it's just going to be a tough area because due to the fact that you got a dry slot and you're just dealing with the low pressure that's moving over your regions in an unfavorable area. But I mean, in Cincinnati, they're calling for four inches of snow. Dayton, close to five. Columbus, four to five. Cleveland, four to five inches. But certainly in northwest Ohio, I think I said northeast Ohio at first, northwest Ohio could get a sizable snowstorm from this. You move it, move it up to the northeast, and then we'll be done talking about the snow, and we'll focus it on the severe weather. Latest snowfall accumulations from this. A big winter storm coming for you guys, but you've all have already been dealing with a lot of snow. More is on the way. Pittsburgh, National Weather Service says around two inches of snow. I could see that, and I think a lot of this will come in the very beginning of the storm. With back-end precipitation too, Erie, they're going for eight inches of snow. New York City, shooting for maybe a dusting to a coating. I think there could be more snow in Boston, and I really I, I like this forecast for the rest of southern New England, but just find one of yours. It's hard to mention every single town and city, guys. Watertown up here, you folks up here in the northern sections of New York State going to get a lot of snow from this. So It's coming, guys. We'll give you another update on the northeast tonight for sure as uh, that really doesn't crank up for you guys until tomorrow in the Ohio Valley. Uh, but listen, this severe weather event, guys, is going to be dangerous today. 
It is, you got an enhanced region that now is attached in these regions. It's just south of Houston, but Houston's going to see some nasty weather. All these coastal regions from southeast Texas all the way to the panhandle of Texas. Everybody in between. There's some highly populated regions in this area uh, where millions of people live. Some bigger cities like New Orleans, Houston, you know, Mobile, um, you know, Lake Charles. Not saying those are big cities, but you get what I'm saying. This is going to be a dangerous event. Enhanced region. The only thing that's stopping this from not being a moderate risk, and it could get upgraded to a moderate risk in a very small region. And uh, just remember to stay tuned towards local updates, okay? Because so because this could change. The only thing that's stopping this from this not being bigger is really the sector of dynamics is creating such a huge severe weather event is not very big it's very small and it's very quick moving so it's moving in and moving out but tornado threat has not changed uh, but still a 10 percent risk in this entire enhanced region including a 10 percent risk to see a significant tornado within 25 miles in any given location guys this is significant i know you're thinking 10 percent's not a big deal mitch it's not but you never know when 10 percent's going to be on top of your house you just don't know. So please take this serious. Wind threat today, um, there will be, especially tonight. That'll be where the biggest wind threat will be. 30% risk to see damaging winds in excess of 55 to 60 miles per hour in this region. Hell threat, there's, it's already hell in portions of southeast Texas this morning. So we'll start this off like this and, um, you know... We'll break it down for you guys, and we'll talk kind of a little bit about the dynamics. But this is going to be really scattered all over the place. And Houston being right here, you already have rotating thunderstorms over Houston at this point. Okay, southeast and southern areas of Houston. This is moving through. When I tell you, and this we'll stop. This is around lunchtime today. This is going to be ramping up here in the next couple of hours. By the time some of you folks are watching this video, there will be severe storm, severe uh, thunderstorm warnings ongoing, tornado warnings ongoing. I can almost bet you. But all these storms will have a chance to really be spinning. If anything, anything gets discreet, kind of like this one out in the Gulf of Mexico, it will have a chance to produce a significant tornado. We do not want anything becoming discreet in this, in, in this setup. Nothing. Because if it does, it's all along. Nothing's bothering it or poking at it or just merging with it. And it will have a chance to fully take advantage of the dynamics, especially the further south it is. So... This is going to be a tough area. You see these little kidney bean features right here. You have some long, stretched out hoda grass, which symbolizes rotating thunderstorms. These, these updrafts are spinning. So this is going to be a messy feature, and, and this is what makes it even more dangerous, guys. We'll stop this around 3 p.m. Look at this massive supercell about to move inland to southern sections of Louisiana. This is another dangerous. Along this main line, you're going to have embedded tornadoes. Um, but that's what's dangerous about this. This is really congealed convection so you, a, lo a lot of this is going to be rain wrapped if you go back and look a couple thursdays ago what made that severe thunder that uh, out tornado outbreak in alabama so dangerous was the fact that you had embedded tornadoes mixed in with that line so that's what made it so dangerous is you couldn't see it coming these people could not see it coming this is going to be another case okay so you continue to go through get this going you're getting into about 5 p.m this is knocking on the door of louisiana i'm sorry new orleans and baton rouge lake charles you've already been dealing with storms that then the brunt of it really comes through shreveport i think you'll be just far enough north where you're out of that sector of severe ingredients where you'll just get a lot of heavy rain. This continues to move in. We'll go on and switch it to the deep south at this point. At this point, the sun's down. It's around 7 p.m. Central Time. You can't see anything. So that's why it's so dangerous. But the severe weather threat don't stop. It's pouring snow in northwest Arkansas, and you're getting lit up with severe storms in southern Louisiana. It, shows you, it really shows you how dynamic this is. So I want to mention... The strong winds ahead of the system is going to be intense. Before the rain even comes for you folks in southern Mississippi, Mobile, Alabama, and western areas of the panhandle of uh, Florida, the winds are going to be intense, guys. But uh, along this line, a damaging wind threat is really going to emerge, and this is around 1 a.m. tonight. Storm is moving through southern Mississippi, knocking on the doorstep of Mobile, Alabama, and then there will be a tornado threat as we're waking up tomorrow morning. 4, 5, 6 a.m., there will be a tornado threat in far southern sections of Alabama, far, far southern sections of Alabama into the western panhandle of Florida as these storms begin to they continue to move through as the sun rises tomorrow. It'll, it'll get to be continuing. Okay, so, you know, I look at um, what's going on with these winds, and, and that's one thing I have not talked about much, and I'm running out of time. 
Uh, but this is potential wind gust, guys, ahead of this storm. We'll switch it back to the 06Z. And this is the winds. I mean, look at the winds. This is 40, 30, 40 mile per hour winds ahead of this storm. So the winds are going to be ripping. These are the main storms back here. But look at these winds. I mean, it's very breezy. This is, well, we'll go on and bring it back to about to this evening. Look at these intense winds. 40 to 50 mile per hour winds gusting through southern Louisiana. 40 to 50 mile per hour winds moving through Louisiana. And of course, if you get hit by the actual storm, it'll be more intense, right? So briefly, I'll talk about the dynamics. This really tells you how small the area is that can hit, get hit by severe weather. It's very, very small, guys. It's a, like a very small sector of ingredients that could be very severe. And here we go. Dew points. Look at these. These are dew points. These are dew points in the 40s and 50s. Not supportive of severe weather. Dew points in the 60s and 70s, that's, that's adequate moisture for severe weather. I'm going to just breeze through this really quick. Start off by this afternoon. Look how, and let's see if we can get this going here. Look how small this little sector is. It's just a little baby area of high-end severe weather ingredients. And this continues, that it widens a little bit, and it's because this low pressure is right here. It is right here. You got a low pressure right here, you got snow up here, and you got severe weather down here. And this happens with a strengthening land low pressure. And you continue to go in, this sector of ingredients is very small. Now it begins to widen out. That's why you have, and, and the reason it does is because the low pressure is moving far north. So it's pulling more low level moisture with it further north. When it's all the way back here, it can only pull in so much into, into the southern flank of the low pressure. So once it gets up here, pours, pulls more uh, low level moisture up here. I could, I could see the severe weather threat increasing for tomorrow across the southeast. It's something we need to watch. It really is. But um, it's such a little small area right here. And you can really see it again. Look at this low level jet. Okay, this is a low level jet pushing 75 to 85 knots, guys even more. It's just insane. You, I, I, We've only seen this a few times in the last few years. So with all this wind energy, puts a ton of spin in the atmosphere, directional shear, tons of wind shear. And you know, man, I keep having to press this. Um, so in general, the, the wind pattern, the wind energy, the kinematics, which is what that is, is maxed out in this area stout low level jet and these winds are mixing to the surface too and that's why you have all these wind alerts wind advisories guys but the low pressure's right here um it's definitely not right here it's it's further up here this sometimes there's some bad feedback on these models but um that is an insane very small low level jet that is going to max out some dynamics over here it's just it's just not a good look okay it really isn't um and then Last thing you'll look at is the instability, these cape levels. It's very small, very small sector. Here it is, rolls through late tonight into the overnight hours. But where there is some fuel to the atmosphere, you got cape levels and the mixed levels now that is trended in this very small region over a thousand joules per kilogram. And I mentioned a couple videos ago that if these cape values get over a thousand joules per kilogram, it's going to be bad. It is, and I'm very worried about you folks that are in these areas that are under these threat levels, okay? I am, please, please, even if you're not hit by a tornado, which, you know, most people won't be, um, you're going to have a higher than not chance to get damaging winds and strong winds. So, very small area. It's not like you have a huge moist sector that rises all the way up here like we typically do. It's very small, but it's potent. It's dangerous, guys, and this moves through all the way until we get into tomorrow. So, Sorry, just hit my knuckle. That's all I got, guys. Be safe today. There's a lot of great people out there in the weather world that do an excellent job. I'm never afraid to promote other weather channels like Ryan Hall. He does a great job. Um, <clears throat> there's other people, too. Um, I think some dude called N8 or something. But anyways, there's some smaller YouTube channels that do just as good as these bigger channels. Um, but... Stay tuned with them. Maybe one day I can do that, um, but I can't do it working a full-time job. That is impossible. And uh, I have also a family, and it would be difficult anyways. But maybe in the future, I would love to do my part in going live with you guys and breaking this down. And right now, I have a very average setup, but there's a lot of great people out there to do it. Ryan Hall is the biggest one. I think that's a household name in the weather world now. And uh, he has an incredible setup. Not afraid to admit that. Um, but... 
Uh, anyways, please stay safe today, guys. Stay safe. And, and more importantly, my kids are getting loud. Have a way to get alerts, guys. It's important. Don't take, don't wait to take the, ser the weather serious until it's serious. And I think that's the common mistake today. So God bless all y'all. Stay safe. Play, praying for all you guys. Enjoy the snow if you're getting the snow. And I'll talk to you tonight.